Hello. Hi. How you doing? Doing okay. Art Alexicus from Everclear. It's uh, Alexakis. Alexakis. Well, thank you for correcting me. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, I'm very sorry. I should know better, right? No, it's Man. Right. How you doing? Good. I'm doing well. 30 years of Everclear. Absolutely. How does that feel? Um, <laughs> people ask me that and it's always like, I have to think about it because I want to give you a genuine answer. Sometimes it's disbelief. Sometimes it's just like, you know, I want to give the pat answer. Oh, it feels great. Blah, 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 blah. But sometimes it literally just is a, a mix of emotions. You know, it, it, it seems like longer sometimes. <laughs> and it seems like literally a blink of an eye of just like, wow, man, you know, because I've been doing it. I've been in the middle of it. And it's, it's hard to get perspective while you're still in it. And I'm still in it. We're still touring. We're still making new music. We're, we're putting out old music and re reimagining it. And um, it's fun. And uh, one thing has changed is that I used to, you know, like most people, you do things you, you don't want to do because you feel you have to do them. I don't do that anymore. I, I If it isn't fun, if it doesn't spark joy, you know, very Marie Kondo, it doesn't do that I don't want to do it and I don't and I don't you know I'm not rich by any, any by any measurement um, I need to work for a living but uh, I, I turn down stuff now because it just doesn't seem like fun that's a good spot to be in it is a good spot to be in I think it's just it, it's I it, it, it's something that's just made my my um i'm i'm a spiritual person i'm not a religious person at all but i'm very spiritual and um i i just feel like i just when i do that i just shrug off all this weight and i just feel free and uh that's a good way to feel especially at the age of 60 right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean You've been doing it for a long, long time. And I mean, I feel, I mean, I definitely grew up with Everclear. Um, and I say that because so many of the albums and songs like um, were part of my life. I know when um, you know, Santa Monica came out, I was in middle school and then so much for the afterglow was high school. And so it was like all these big moments in my life um, were are tied to your music. And it's, such a cool feeling and experience and i'm sure you get that a lot just people being able to to share that with you so i do but you know what i it never it never i never get jaded about it that's just i mean i know i feel that about other people's music to this day i can hear a song and it takes me back to 1973 right it takes me back to being 11 years old i remember where i was i remember the idea i had when i connected with lyrics that it just opened up a, a world for me right and it, or it made me feel better about myself like listening to the song when i was a kid papa was a rolling stone by the temptations you know um that used to make me cry because even though that wasn't my dad's story my dad wasn't there yeah. you know and that was rough but it made me feel not alone to hear something like that and when people tell me that about father of mine, I get it, you know, I understand it. Cause I wrote that song for me. I write all my songs for me. I think all songwriters do, unless you're trying to write to make product, which I've never been interested in. I've got friends who are like, be, become like Nashville songwriters. And they're like, man, you should do this. You'd be killer at this. I'm like, I have no interest whatsoever. <laughs> sitting down to write songs every day doesn't sound like fun writing songs is fun but doing it as a day job punching a clock nah, not for me. yeah i mean a lot all, all of your music is very uh genuine it's honest it's uh relatable for people you talk about you know relationships whether it's with uh, a girl and you know relationships with your your kid um uh, relationship with your father or the lack thereof. I mean, you really put it all out there. 
I do. I do. And I appreciate you saying that. And that's that's the highest compliment you can pay me is that it's gen you feel like it's genuine and real because I write I, I don't write every song from a uh, autobiographical point of view. I'd say about 30%. Another 30%, I take different things in my life and ideas I've had and fears and dreams and put it to, and build characters. So they are based, they are coming from a very personal place, but they're not autobiographical. And then the other 30% is I just write, you know, I just come up with stories. And uh, if if I can do that, and people have a hard time telling the difference between the three or they can't tell the difference, I'm doing my job as a songwriter. As yeah. A songwriter. Yeah, and you've been doing it for 30 years, probably longer, but, you know, officially as Everclear for 30 years. And, I mean, I thought I was the, the world's biggest Everclear fan, and I was uh, proven wrong by your um, release on social or the, the, the uh, streaming platforms of World of Noise. Um, it gets a little scary, dude. <laughs> well, for me, it's like, it's like, I'm like, shame on me for not knowing that. Um, but f good for me, because now I have a new Everclear record to listen to, right? There's some really nice people on the Everclear pages. They're, they're, they're very, very helpful. But there's, there's a few that are like, pretty deep in. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so what's it like to kind of revisit that and put it out there for people to consume and well, you know, the, the, the Uber fans have been asking for it for years um, to put it on social platforms. And I just wasn't really happy with the way the the mastering sounded, the EQ sounded on the uh, Capital version that came out in 94. And when it went out of print and it reverted to me in 99, I didn't do anything about it. And then, but there wasn't social platforms in 99 then. About 2009, 2010, that became a thing. And uh, I just didn't want to put out that same stuff. I knew I might have to. I was just hoping I could find something somewhere. I, I thought the tapes were gone. And I found them this year in January in, in, in a trunk all taped up in the back of my storage. And uh, I found all the tapes, all my tapes, going back to... Colorfinger, the band before Everclear, Easy Hose, the band before that, and even Shaking Brave, the band, my first band of me writing lyrics and singing songs and being a front guy from like 86, 87. I got, I got those original mastered uh, mixtapes. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm stoked. And uh, this, it just sounded so much better so than the Capital version. So that's why I wanted to put it out this year. And I wanted to put it on digital platforms for people because I mean, the only way you could get it is buying the album or the CD and they were going for hundreds of dollars. And I just, that just isn't right. Music shouldn't cost that much. I think you should pay for music, but I don't think you should pay that much. I think 10 bucks a record is fair, you know? Yeah. And um, so uh, the vinyl will come out early next year and um, we'll probably put out Color Finger next year or after that, and we've got a new single that we're gonna, we've we've de I've decided to write and make a single once once twice a year, and we got a song coming out called The Year of the Tiger. That's uh, good. It just sounds like vintage, uh, sparkling day era, Everclear kind of heroin girlish sounding. Nice song and it's it's a political song it'll, it'll be out in uh, probably september october okay very cool i'm excited for that yeah um and upcoming i mean i think you're uh, obviously on tour now and uh july 14th you'll be at penn's peak uh which is where uh, around from where i'm from um i had the pleasure of seeing you there back in 2013 Right. Um, with Filter, and I think Alien live. Ant Farm may have been a part of that. No, no, no? Filter, different show. Live, and, live, yes. And um, Sponge. Sponge. Okay, yes. I, Alien Ant Farm must have been a different show. Same place. It was Summerland. Um, yeah, it was Summerland. Yeah, and then I saw you uh, around here at the. It was now it's the Mohegan Sun Arena. Back then, it I don't know what it was called back then, but uh, it was like 2000 or 2001. You were with Matchbox Twenty. Yep. So again, I followed you for a long time, and um, 
unfortunately, I won't be able to be at the Penn Speak show on Thursday, the 14th. Um, my wife is due with our daughter on uh, Monday, the 11th. Your first baby? It'll be our second, our second. We have a four and a half year old uh, little boy. Oh. Um, you got a boy and girl, you're done, man. They, they say that they say, yeah, the all American family, right? No, that's great. I, I, I had two daughters and I love being uh, the father of a daughter. It's a great thing. Um, Any but, tips? Any tips uh, for a, a girl yeah. dad? Yeah. So you're, they're going to love you um, like no other woman's ever loved you before. Not even your wife, not your mom, yeah, until they're about 12. <laughs> Do they hate you then? No, I don't think Close. they hate you. Sometimes. But um, they come back. Yeah. And uh, I, I have a really great relationship with my 14-year-old. I'm saying that, of course, because she's over there in the corner. <laughs> um, no, you know, it's just a lot of work, man. You gotta, you, you just have to keep working at, at any relationship, even being married. It just doesn't yeah. happen. You got to keep working and you got to grow together, not, not apart. And I've been with my, my daughter's mom for almost 18 years. Yeah, that's and, great. Uh, it's, you know, it was my fourth marriage and uh, I finally figured it out and um, I, with the right person. And it's just, it's still the best relationship and friendship of my life. And uh, that I think that security helps my daughter feel more secure, um, uh, unlike my eldest daughter, you know. And it's just you learn, man. You just learn. You're just you're going to learn by making mistakes, and you're going to learn by doing successful stuff. Can you see what that is? It's a housekeeping. I'm calling the hotel room. It's housekeeping. They want to clean your room. What are they saying? I don't know. Did we lose them? Did we lose Art? We may have lost Art. That might be a wrap for Art Alexakis from the band Everclear on the Popco project. Unfortunate, but uh, at least I got a few minutes with him. Um, we'll give him a second to see if he jumps back on here, but um, you know, he's obviously he's a, traveling. He's, he said he was in Kentucky. Uh, he's in a hotel room right now. So uh, the uh, internet might be uh, spotty where he is, but uh, yeah, I think we lost him. Unless he comes back in. We'll see. Come back in, Art. Please come back in. It's weird. I was uh, not kidding when I said, I mean, I grew up with Everclear. Uh, huge, huge fan of Everclear. Um, you know, I remember when I was, oh, uh, it was when the, their album came out in 2000. Uh, what was the call? I forget the name of the song, the album. Um, I think it was songs from an American movie part one. I remember uh, the girl I was seeing at the time, she was doing something and I had her mom drive me to the uh, gallery of sound locally. And um, uh, so I can pick up the record and we're actually leaving to go on a, uh, Oh, I think he's back. I think he's back. There's no audio yet, but I think you're muted. I think you're on mute. I think you're frozen. You there? I think he's back. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yeah. Your screen's frozen, but that's okay. Okay. I can... It's not. It's not a good connection. That's weird. Yeah, it happens. You're on the um, road, man. The... I may have lost him again. But I was telling a story about um, 
uh, getting that record. And uh, it was, we were on our way to go see uh, Dave Matthews play in New Jersey, but I had to, I had to get that record before we hit the, we hit the road um, because uh, it was just, you know, I love that band. I love Everclear. I think he's back. Let's try again. I think he's back. Hold on. No worries. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly now. Yeah. Can you hear me? John? Okay. Yeah, I got so you. I just went to my I went to I went to my iPhone. I went to the cell phone. Perfect. No worries. I appreciate it. I was just telling a story, trying to fill some uh the dead the dead air. Um just um just how uh, important the band has been, you know, in my life. I'd say, I mentioned that earlier, but uh, not important to you right now. Um, we're talking about, you know, families and kids and, and just how important that is. Yeah. To each of us. Right. And it's really cool that your daughter yeah, gets to come, come out with you. She's been doing it since she was like three or four with her mom, you know, and then by the time I think she was eight or nine right in there, was the first time that she came out with me and I would, I would fly home and get her and then fly back and, and fly back with her. But the last couple of years and this year, um, she wanted to fly by herself. So we're flying her home by herself and like we did last year. And so that's, that's interesting. Does that make you nervous? Yeah. She's very, yeah. Hell yeah. It makes me nervous. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I could, I could not imagine. <laughs> you, you, really? You gonna put, there's people who put their kids, they're like three. My wife, my, my daughter's mom, Vanessa, her her parents, her dad, they they were in Boston. When they divorced, he moved to back to South Carolina and took her to court to get um, partial custody. Not She didn't get custody, he got visitation. And she had to send her four-year-old daughter on a plane by herself every, you know, on, on and that went on for like 10 years. Wow. And he'd be late to pick her up at the airport. She'd just be sitting there. I mean, come on. You know, I just like, man, I could, I just couldn't imagine. Cause yeah. you know, I'm just like, the thing now is that when you take them to the airport, and you put, you know, and they're they're underage. They you have to wait there till the plane is in the air, literally in the air, and wait at the gate. And they tell you the plane's in the air, sir. You're good to go. And then then I can leave. Yeah. And they have to wear like some kind of badge too, like right, some kind of like big that says like on a on. A... I think that's for little kids. I, yeah. I don't think so. I think. I think for for her they give her wings, you know, or yeah, something like. Yeah. But but they but they walk her on board like like someone at the gate walks her on board, and they know that that the the flight attendants know she's there, and they keep an eye on her, and if there's someone creepy, you know, sitting next to her, they'll move that person. Um, yeah, that's never happened to my daughter, but. I've, I've seen that happen to other people. As a matter of fact, I remember this one kid was sitting there and his mom was like two rows over because this guy wouldn't move, you know, so she could sit next to her kid and he's talking to her kid like, oh, that's really fun. Show me some stuff. And, you know, he's sitting there drinking down highballs and, and I look to the lady next to me. I go, I don't like that. She goes, I don't like that at all. And we called the lady and the lady came and kick the guy off the plane just wow. kicked him off the plane he was drunk and other people had complained that he was inappropriate he just kicked his butt off the plane and she got to sit next to her mom which is awesome yeah. <laughs> and you know what's it like you know, being... yeah. go ahead no no go ahead no i mean obviously you wrote the song father mine and your father was not uh in your life so to speak i mean how important was it you know when you became a father to make sure that you were you know different and and, and present well it, that's kind of a weird question considering that's why i wrote the song you know it says in the song i'm not gonna let that happen yeah. um it was very it was very important and uh 
you know, I remember before I wrote the song, I was watching my oldest daughter sleep when she was like seven. And, you know, parents just watch their baby sleep sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I just didn't understand how someone could walk away from that. You know, how do you walk away from that? How do you do that? Yeah. I just didn't understand. And you know what? I don't have ill feelings towards my father. I don't. He died a few years ago. I didn't know him very well. I'd lived with him a couple of times, but I didn't know him like my mom. My mom raised me. My mom was my mom and my dad and everything. She believed in me. She sometimes didn't believe in me. You know, it wasn't always, you know, sunshine and rainbows, but she was always there for me. She always took care of me. I was always loved and I was always had food to eat and a place to live and clean clothes and um, a role model that I could base my life on in a positive way. That's great. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. And my mom passed about 16 years ago and I still miss her. She's still, I still got her phone number in my phone. Yeah. I still got her cell phone in my phone. My, my dad passed away 17 years ago and I still have his um, number in my phone and what I wouldn't give to have uh, yeah. and be able to call again. <laughs> It's unfortunate. Yeah, I know, right? If it ever calls your phone, you're going to be like, what the? <laughs> well, funny story is. Where's the well, cameras? <laughs> funny story is. Am I in the Jordan Peele movie? Am I black? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was a year or two after my dad passed, my mom gave his cell phone to uh, my uncle. And uh, so my uncle had his number and I didn't change my dad's number in my phone or whatever. And my, my uncle called me and I got a phone call from my dad. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> it was Whoa. my uncle. It was my uncle, obviously, but yeah, it was it was a weird yeah, moment. For that's, sure. still, that's still creep. That's still creepy. Yeah, because <laughs> I didn't know that prior that my mom gave my dad's cell phone to uh, her brother. But, yeah, um, I'm I'm sure my mom's number is someone else's number. It probably has been for a decade, you know, or more. Um, but I just, you know, I just like seeing it there on my phone. Yeah. yeah. And uh, obviously a couple of years ago, um, you know, you, you've addressed your fans with the, the unfortunate news that you, you have MS. Um, you know, how has that hindered you, if at all? And I mean, has working through that and, and dealing with that, you know, have you found out something about yourself that you didn't know before? Well, to answer that question, um, no, I've always known I was very tenacious. I've always known I was, not always known, I've known for a while that I'm tenacious and um, able to uh, um, persevere through hard times. One thing I did that happened with it um, that I wasn't aware of, what I would feel was. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for my disease. It makes me try harder because everything's harder. Uh, you're a young man, but as you get older, you're gonna notice things get harder. Physical things get harder. Mental things get harder. Your cognition isn't what it, it was. You know, it, everything's a little harder. You have to try harder as you get older. And, you know, let's say MS adds another 10, 15 years on it. I have to try even harder and I have to work harder to go out and play every night and to, and to be, um, be there for my family and to be, have that energy. Because one of the things that MS does is it fatigue, physical fatigue and mental fatigue. And uh, it's hard to push through it sometimes, but it's, uh, I'm able to do it. And I'm grateful because it, that's made me, tougher and more patient with the world around me and more compassionate to the world around me as well. So I'm grateful for my disease. I am. Would I rather not have it? Yeah, of course. But that's not, that's not going to happen. Yeah. That's like, you know, as rainbows and, and unicorns. Um, I have it. That's a fact. And I'm grateful for it because instead of just being a negative thing, 
it's helped me become a better person in other ways. I don't walk as well as I used to. Um, I, you know, my balance isn't great. Um, I get for a little forgetful sometimes. I don't know if it's that or age or what, you know, probably a combination of the yeah. two, <laughs> but um, no, it's, and, uh, you know, um, so I think I answered all your questions. Um, you know, I, I got to work harder and I'm grateful for it. But you're, you're still playing rock shows. You're still giving us uh, great performances. And I'm 60 years old and I'm still playing rock and roll every night and making a living and taking care of my family and providing for my band and their families. And, and uh, we're doing it. And I plan on doing it for at least another 10 years. You know, I, if, I if, hope to see if it. people still want to hear us do it. We'll see. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Well, I'm super excited for the the new uh, new music to come out. Um, I wish I could come see you on July 14th at Penn's Peak. I'm sure tickets are still available, right, for that show? Yeah. yeah. It was a great venue. So, and, great. No, and, you, and you have Fastball, another great band in the 90s, uh, the Nixons. Uh, yeah. Great, great bands from the 90s. All three of the bands, including Everclear, were old school rock bands. We don't use tracks or Pro Tools or or out of tune or any of that stuff. We're, we're real rock bands. We're out there doing it every night. Yeah, I mean, it's great that you're doing this like 30 years. I mean, I, I always say like, for my generation, you know, we have Pearl Jam, we have Foo Fighters, um, and we have Everclear. Like we have these bands that are just staples that continue to give us great music and just, you know, positive role models. I mean, um, not only do you uh, share that in your music, but obviously as a person, you know, talking to you right now, you're, you're a positive role model for, you know, guys like me to look up to. And, and uh, so, you know, thank, thank you for, for everything. And when I said to you before about, you know, following you for so long, I mean, uh, you have no idea what an honor it is for you to, to do this uh, on this, this podcast with me today. I uh, can't thank you enough. Um, so just thank you for everything. You're welcome, John. Thank you. It was wonderful talking to you. Good luck with everything. And we'll be around, we'll be back around in the area again probably next year. So we'll see you then. And good luck with your new baby. I hope that goes well. Um, do you got a name picked out? I do. Do you want to hear it? I haven't told anybody yet. Are, are you sharing it? Well, it's going to be on a podcast. I know with uh, a huge rock star. I will share it with you. I, um, you know, my mom knows, my wife's mom knows, like, People close to us know, but I feel like this is a good moment to share it. All right. My, okay. our son's, our son's name is Lincoln. Lincoln. And our daughter's name is going to be London. London. Where does, where does that come from? Is Lincoln, first of all, does Lincoln come from Abraham Lincoln? No, no. We were, we were just looking for a name that wasn't uh, plain like John. <laughs> um, and looking back, I was like, I well, kind of wish. Cool. I, I love Lincoln in London. And your last name's Popco? Yeah, Popco. Yep. Lincoln Popco. London Popco. Cool names, dude. Yeah. Well I, gave, I gave my son, my name is his middle name. I, I, I wanted to, <laughs> looking back, I wish I named him John, but I wanted to have him have his own, like, his own thing. No. I think he did the right thing. That's how the Greeks do it. So I'm Arthur Paul. My dad's name was Paul. He was Paul Lewis. His dad's name was Lewis. Oh, his okay. dad's name was Lewis Arthur. His his dad's name, my great great grandfather was Arthur. And I believe he was an Arthur Paul. That's you know, neat. Um, going, going back. So now I and I think getting outside of the family names is a good idea. But giving them your name as your middle name, I think is cool. Yeah. I think it's cool. Like if we had a boy, we were gonna name him Economos because Economos is a Greek word for for fortune for good fortune and it's also my mother's my mother-in-law's maiden name or her mother her mother um so we're i'm i'm greek i'm half greek my wife's and i think quarter greek or eighth greek and uh so my daughter's greek on both sides and uh we just went we just went to greece for the first time in april Oh wow! That any of us had ever been there, it was was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But um, good luck to you and your family, man. 
Yes, All thank you. Thank you again for thank you for everything and uh keep on rocking, man. All right, brother. I will. All right, See ya. thanks. See ya. Bye. All right, a little shaky, a little uh technical difficulties, but uh that was the interview with Art from the band Everclear. Um you know, it's just uh, wild that I've had the uh, opportunity to, you know, talk to people like him and, you know, Tantric and the Verve Pipe and Cold and just bands that I grew up with. And uh, yeah, I'm just so thankful for that. Uh, thank you for listening. If you stuck through it, uh, I know that there was a little bit of issues there, but I uh, appreciate those who do tune in. Sorry, I couldn't get to any of the questions that people had asked on, on social media. Um, you know, this interview was supposed to happen uh, an hour and a half ago. It got bumped back. So Art is very busy. Um, if you're watching this, you can see that he's in his hotel room. So uh, I didn't want to uh, get too uh, bogged down with, um, you know, generic stuff. So um, thank you for asking the question. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you for getting involved with what I do. Thanks for being interactive. And uh, I promise you that uh, if you continue to ask those questions, I will do my best to um, you know, get those into the artists and, you know, people that I, that I speak to. So thank you again for listening. Thank you to my sponsors, um, Keller's Garden Center and Lawn Care Services, Ionic Development, the V-Spot Bar in Scranton, um, and stay tuned for some uh, new sponsors that uh, I've, uh, I have in the, in the workings. They're uh, a great, going to be a great partner and I'm looking excited. I'm looking forward to sharing um, them with you and, and what they offer. So, uh, Thank you again, and uh, you'll hear from me soon. See ya.